Oh, I love you. Come on. Hallelujah. Oh, let's say hallelujah tonight. Hallelujah. Man, it feels great in here tonight. Let's, um, I, uh, let's do this. Let's give Nathan and the team a hand tonight. Nathan and Ashley. That was amazing. Um, Nathan is a good friend of ours, and uh, we love you know, getting to connect and do ministry meetings together and stuff, but he's a good friend, and I thought he did great tonight. That was a, an amazing presence. How many of you guys just sense the presence of God here? Amen. I believe, um, I believe we've only just begun. There's another wave that's about to begin to come into this place tonight, and uh, I just want us to stand up and position ourselves for it. I know we, you know, have people stand up and sit down a lot, you know, and we don't make you do spiritual gymnastics for, you know, any pointless reason, but, you know, there's something powerful about participation with the Lord. There's something powerful about, you know, getting out of our natural comfort zone and stepping into the anointing by faith. Amen. You know, uh, it said, Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven is not over here nor over there, but he said the kingdom of God is within. And he said, the kingdom of God doesn't come by observation, you can't see it coming from over here, from over there. It's within you. You can't observe the kingdom. He said, so if the kingdom doesn't come by observation, it comes by participation with what's on the inside of us. Amen. It's that kingdom within that needs to come out. It's that Christ in us, whew, the hope of glory tonight that's going to begin to manifest. And I just want us to lift our hands and posture ourselves for a fresh anointing. I believe tonight there really is going to be a release of the anointing of God and oil from heaven for our destinies. You know, I agree with what Pastor Karen said. We're in a place that is filled with destiny and purpose. And uh, she didn't know what I was going to preach on tonight, but that's what I'm going to preach on. And uh, tonight there's oil that's beginning beginning to come into this place, a fresh oil from heaven. And Lord, we just thank you tonight that there are no limitations, Father. And we're standing and believing, Lord. And we're not just standing in an earthly realm, but we're standing in heavenly places. We're operating from a place of ascension, from a place of being seated far above every power. Principality, I thank you that tonight, Lord, we're seated in places of victory, seated in places of glory, seated in places where we always have the upper hand. Your word says that we are constantly led in triumph and victory in Christ Jesus. And I thank you tonight, Lord, that we will triumph over the enemy. We will triumph over disease. We will triumph over infirmity. We will triumph over poverty and lack. We will triumph over doubt and unbelief tonight. We'll triumph over uh, uh, everything that would try to bring demonic resistance, Lord. We even thank you right now that there's a mighty breaker anointing tonight. Lord, I pray that you would come down like a hammer. Father, to break that which is hard, that which is stagnant. Lord, I thank you that you're stirring it up right now. Father, in your holy name, Jesus, we thank you that your power is present to heal tonight. We thank you, Father, that your anointing breaks yokes and removes burdens. And that's what you're releasing, Father, a fresh new anointing. In your name, Jesus. In your name, Jesus. Let's give Jesus just a big, mighty shout tonight. Ha! Ha! One more mighty shout tonight. Hey! Ha! Ha! Woo! My, my, my. Ha! I love the shout of the Lord. <laughs> Woo! You guys can be seated tonight. We've, uh, we've got a lot that we're going to do. And um, I'm just being sensitive to, you know the movement of the Spirit tonight, whatever He wants to do. Um, lately, I will say this though, um, lately uh, there's been a realm of visitation that has been coming into our meetings. Um, when Jordan and I have been preaching, there's almost been like this spontaneous uh, combustion that takes place within the meetings, and it's, you know, things that we don't even see coming, you know, things that just begin to start manifesting and happening that we didn't plan. You know, like the other night, um, we started our California tour in Los Angeles. Do we got any people from out of town, by the way? I know we have our Visalia friends, our, our Tadlock family here and stuff. And uh, Do we have anyone else? Just shout out where you're from. Chachilla? Chowchilla? I don't know where that is. I, I'm not from here, so I, I won't know where you're from unless it's somewhere I've been before in California. But anyone else? Where? Oh, like 20 minutes away. Amen. Amen. Well, awesome. 
Praise the Lord. Well, we started out in California, uh, Los Angeles, California, um, just this last weekend, and uh, we had a powerful night. The last night we uh, ministered on a Saturday night, and uh, I began to, you know, take the pulpit, and next thing I know, there's just this mighty release of the spirit of prophecy, you know, just a sovereign realm that began to come into the room, and, you know, we re- honestly didn't want to touch it. We didn't, you know, you d- have you ever been in, like, such a strong atmosphere of God's presence that you don't even want to, like, disturb it? You don't want to quench or grieve the Holy Spirit. It's so pure, so amazing that you just, you got to be really careful. You got to walk with that dove on your shoulder, and there, there was such a sweet, pure yet powerful realm that was in our meeting in Los Angeles this past Saturday night, and uh, I didn't even get to preach my message. I just had, you know, a lot of things in my heart. I was planning to release this word, you know, but uh, the word just decided to manifest itself, and and people were getting delivered. People were getting freed. There was an oil of gladness that was released. People just laughing under the joy of the Lord. People, you know, getting healed in their seats. We didn't even have to lay hands on some people, but some were just getting touched and encountered by God, and uh, I'll tell you this, I was uh, calling out a few words of knowledge for some conditions that I felt like God was uh, sharing with me, and as I was praying for people, there was this young boy, probably, how old was he, honey, like eight years old, eight or nine years old, and uh, this little boy, he was sitting closer to the back, but he comes up to the front, and uh, he just stands up there, and I'm thinking, is he responding to something I called out? And his mom comes up and, and explains that he was just hungry for prayer. She saw, he saw the people getting touched. He saw the people getting encountered by God, you know, getting slain in the spirit, falling, laughing, crying, just getting touched. And he, said, and he just said, I want that. And he decided to come out of his seat and run up to the front to get prayer. And this kid, when I laid hands on him, he just fell out, and he was shaking under the power of God all night just encountering Jesus, like, all night, just didn't move, and uh, it just touched my heart so much that God is, you know, gripping the heart of the youth, gripping, you know, people at a young age, and I believe, you know, he's doing things all across the generational board, you know, it's not about age, but it's something so, there's something so powerful when you see the youth begin to get encountered by Jesus, (laughs) and, uh, you know, these type of things have been happening in our meetings, and really, I look back to um, a couple years ago when I was in Colorado. Uh, this is when it all began, you know, and I was, um, I'm still, you know, a young preacher. I'm still new to all of this and learning to preach, and I'll be honest, you know, my testimony is one where I was really afraid of public speaking. I could not communicate in front of people or, you know, anything like that, and I'm really a testimony in that. God has, you know, graced me to learn more and more about preaching and teaching. And, you know, uh, I I was honestly, um, I don't know if I would consider myself illiterate, but I really didn't like to read. Um, And that's based upon how, uh, or based upon the reason because I was born with a visual impairment. I was born legally blind, and uh, my twin brother and I both, and uh, I've always struggled my whole life seeing correctly and you know, um, I, I honestly need a miracle from God, and I've been standing on the word and receiving percentages of healing, you know, but I know that God's not just a 10% God or a 20% God or even a 50, 75% God. He's 100%, you know, and it's going to have to manifest sooner or later. Amen. And so the work that God begins, he's faithful to finish. And, uh, you know, I was called at 19 years old into the ministry, and I was encountered by God, and I just started, you know, praying for all the sick people I could find, you know, and it wasn't because I ever wanted to build a miracle ministry or anything like that, but it's because I felt a divine calling toward it, you know, and I knew that, um, that the reason the enemy attacked me in my physical eyesight is because, first of all, I was called to seeing in the spirit like we all are. We're all called to be seers, prophetic people, but also because I had a calling to the miraculous. And so I started pursuing that and going after God with, uh, with all my heart, praying for sick people. And I said, Lord, I'm going to pray for as many blind people as I can. And, uh, you know, we've seen tremendous things just over the years of, you know, miracle after miracle, testimony after testimony of not just blind eyes, but, you know, blind and deaf, people who are born with both and people born completely deaf and people with crippled legs and all that stuff by the grace of God, you know. And um, and so I've just been going after God, you know, really for the past five years. But two years ago is when things really begin to change. Um, I remember I was at a youth camp, 
um, doing a week of uh, camp meetings. And I was invited by this guy that I didn't know at the time. He's now one of my best friends. But uh, I was a little unsure about it whenever I took the invitation because I've never really, you know, um, felt like I connected well with youth. You know, back then I just didn't see myself fitting in with the kids or connecting like I'd probably like to, you know. And so I was a little nervous. And uh, the first night was a good night. It was like a breaker night, you know. We broke the ice and had a good time in the Lord. And then the second night came. And, uh, you know, it was like last week weekend in uh, – Los Angeles. I had a message ready, and I had something I wanted to speak over the kids. And uh, you know, I'm about ten minutes into my sermon, and all of these kids just start laughing. They're just laughing and laughing and laughing, and they're like becoming really um, obnoxious in their laughing. Like it's so loud. They are so rowdy. They are like, you know, really disrupting the meeting. Right? Just these youth and teens, and they're just laughing, 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 and I can't figure out what's happening. You know, I, I must have been really dull. But, like, I'm sitting there, like, thinking these kids aren't even listening to me. They're just laughing. And they're, and some of them are crying. And I'm like, what is going on right now? And, I, and, and my friend Josiah is playing the keyboards. And all of a sudden, this beautiful sound begins to be released through his keyboards. And he later testified that an angel came up behind him and began to play with him sounds that he couldn't possibly make on the keyboard. And uh, from that point on, his uh, ability has skyrocketed. He's had like a supernatural download when it came to the keyboards. And he now, he's like a, a real psalmist. He can, he can prophesy, and, and he's like a, that's what God did that night. But um, he started playing this beautiful sound, and the glory of God just began to fill the room. It was incredible. And uh, kids, you know, just start laughing. And I'm thinking, like, what are these kids doing? Like, I'm like getting mad, you know? And uh, finally, the Lord kind of nudges me, and he says, hey, I'm, uh, I'm going to take over from here. And uh, <laughs> I'm like, all right. And, uh, but, and so at that point, I realized that I'm just facilitating. You know, I'm just there to facilitate and oversee what God is doing, you know. And, and I, I was just rolling with it. And that's when I started to learn um, this, the truth in the scriptures that say a cheerful heart is good like medicine. Proverbs 17, 22, a cheerful heart is good like medicine. And I started to see that um, these kids were getting healed as they laughed, not just the physical things, but emotional things and things like depression, things like, you know, mental attacks and things like that. These kids were, you know, totally getting delivered because a cheerful heart makes good like medicine. And, you know, science is beginning to confirm this, that laughing actually releases healing properties inside of our bodies. And there's also some t- something about when we receive a hug that releases healing properties inside of our bodies. And sometimes God just wants to hug us. He just wants us to, to laugh. And that's when we get into that realm of joy unspeakable and full of glory. Amen. And so I've, I've learned to never underestimate the joy of the Lord. And, you know, I remember when, I, like I said, when I was 19, I got touched by God. And I was just, if I could say it this way, whacked for like weeks and months. Like, honestly... God, God, it was like, I was the weird guy at church, if I could put it that way. I would be, whoa, I would be that guy, you know, just the, the spirit would come on me, or someone would even be preaching something like really simple, like the cross and, and the blood, and it would just, it would just hit me, and I would, ah, oh, like fall out of my seat, and I'd be that, cry, that kid that would just cry and laugh, and man, everyone thought I was weird, my family thought I was weird. And, uh, but I was being delivered. I was being totally set free, you know, from years of, uh, you know, skepticism and unbelief. You know, I had such a hard heart because I was born with a handicap. And I used to hate the idea of a good and loving God. And I was really bitter towards a lot of people. I was a, a really angry, hateful person. And, um, you know, God touched my heart and really pierced my heart with the goodness of God. And it was, you know, that revelation that I'll never be able to let go. I had this knowing that I know, that I know, that I know on the inside of me that no one could take away from me. And, you know, all the philosophy that I was around in in college, all of the psychology that I was around, I thank God for those things. They're not bad things in themselves, but you know what? I was struggling. I was was a, a Christian, an unbelieving believer on a slippery slope to atheism. Because all I had was human wisdom, all I had was intellect, all I had was, you know, this rational thinking. 
And what I needed was an encounter with God. And I have a special heart for people who are in that place, you know, people who are genuinely seeking. But they don't they don't realize that what they're really seeking is a is a true encounter with Jesus Christ. And so I got touched in such a powerful way and I I knew God marked my life. But, you know, uh, (laughs) when I was at this camp meeting, these kids were laughing, getting set free. Kids were, you know, testifying of um, seeing angels and uh, there, can I stretch you guys a little bit tonight? How many, how many of you guys believe in signs and wonders? Signs and wonders. Amen. I'm in the right place then. Um, signs and wonders. There was a, a pocket of kids in the back, and they, they had gold dust and oil on their hands manifesting. And these kids were just being marked by the supernatural. And I'm going to stretch you even more. There were a few kids, not just one, not just two, but a few kids who testified of when the were slain in the spirit, they took trips to heaven. These kids begin to experience heaven, and one girl in particular who was 16 years old came back and wrote 10 pages of notes about what she saw in heaven. And I live in the Carolinas um, next to a ministry called Morning Star Ministries with Rick Joyner. How many of you guys know who he is? He wrote a book called The Final Quest. And this young girl began to write almost verbatim what Rick Joyner saw when he had a, a heavenly experience. And she, you know, was reading it. And I was almost, I, I could feel the spirit of God. And I was weeping, you know, because of the purity and, and the, you know, the depth of what she saw. And uh, her life was forever changed, you know. And uh, these are what's called destiny encounters. You know, encounters for the sake of destiny. That's what I love, you know, most. It's not just about a touchy and a feely. It's not just about, you know, having another preacher lay hands on you or anything like that, you know, those are great things. I value impartation and stuff, but what about something that will mark us and rest and remain on our lives forever? Jesus. And uh, so ever since then, there's been this sovereign realm of visitation that, you know, would begin to come into our meetings. People just beginning to laugh and, and, and fall under such a, um, a weighty presence of the Lord. You know, where the Lord just overshadows them, they become overcome, and then, bam, they're encountered, they're changed. And so, praise God, that's what we want tonight, amen. <laughs> uh, woo! Uh, and so, I can't promise that, you know, um, <laughs> I'll have it all together tonight if I continue preaching along this vein. You know, Paul said, if I'm out of my mind, it's because of him. <laughs> but if I'm sober, it's because of you. And so he had to, you know, stay at his boiling point, if you will. He couldn't get too far gone in the spirit or else, you know, he, he wouldn't have been able to help anybody. And uh, sometimes I get so touched by God when I'm, I'm preaching the good news, when I'm preaching the gospel. How many of you guys know that we need to hear the gospel every day? Martin Luther said we must hear the gospel every day because we forget the gospel every day. And so we need to constantly hear the good news. We need to constantly uh, center ourselves around the revelation of Jesus. And that's because Jesus is the revelation of revelations. Amen. Jesus Christ, there's no greater mystery than the mystery that's been unveiled in the person of Jesus Christ. That's why it says in Colossians chapter 2 that Jesus Christ is the mystic secret of God. The mystic secret of God. In Colossians chapter 1 says that mystery that's been hidden from ages and ages and ages but has now been revealed. That mystery is Christ in you, the hope of glory. The greatest of mysteries. And so... Um, I'm going to preach and lay foundation tonight on the person of Jesus. I'm going to go into what I believe is a very um, pivotal moment in Jesus' life and ministry. And we're going to look at that. And uh, I'm going to go to Luke chapter 4 if you want to go there. But um, while you guys are going there, I do want to make a a quick, quick, quick announcement um, towards something that I do believe will bless you guys. Uh, This is called Open Heavens Evangelism. And this is a two-disc teaching set that's available in the uh, back over there, or in the front, I should say, in the hallway. And uh, this is a school called Open Heavens Evangelism Manifesting the Ascended Life. Say the ascended life. And the concept of this teaching is that we are people who were not only crucified with Christ, and we were a people who were not only resurrected with Christ, but we're a people who have ascended with Christ. 
See, we love to preach identity. We love to preach on, you know, our association with Christ on the cross. Amen. You have been crucified with Christ. Colossians chapter 3, 3 says you have died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. And we, so we also know Romans chapter 6, if we have died with Christ, surely we shall live with Christ. We know that we are born again. And uh, I love that reality, but that's unto something even greater. Because Christ wasn't just crucified, he wasn't just resurrected, he ascended. And he brought you with him. And so we are a people who are not just bound to this earthly realm any longer, but we're citizens of heaven. We are people who coexist in two realms, heaven and earth. You are, you are, you are an earthly being, you're in an earth suit, but you have an earthen treasure on the inside of you, a heavenly treasure that lives in you, that kingdom of heaven. And uh, so this is about manifesting the ascended life, manifesting heaven, to put it in simple terms. And um, I preach from uh, the scripture from 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17, which is one of my favorite passages of scripture in all honesty because it talks about the new creation reality. Those who are in Christ, they become new creatures altogether. My, I could preach, I'll, I, pr I will preach this the rest of my life. I love the revelation of that we are new altogether. The Phillips translation says it's not, it's, it's not about getting a modified version of your old you when you come to Christ. It's not about becoming a better version of the old man. The old man is put to death and you become brand new altogether. That's because the word new is the word kainos. Say kainos. It's the word kainos, and it doesn't just mean new. It means uh, a, of a new origin, of a new species. And so you could have a new car, but that's compared to a car that's never even been released yet or seen in the earth. And that's what's, uh, that's what's populating the earth right now. For those who are in Christ, they are a new species a, of a kingdom order. They are kingdom people. Ha! Huh. People born of the glory of God. That's why it says if, uh, if you must be born again to see the kingdom of heaven. Born again. Say born again. Did you know that that phrase born again in the Greek can be translated to mean born from above? Born from a higher plane of existence? Huh. That's what it means to be born again. And, and if you're not born again, you can't see the kingdom of heaven. But when you are born again, when you are born from a higher plane of existence, you can see the kingdom of heaven. You can manifest the kingdom of heaven. Hallelujah. And so the reason this is important is because it's foundational to the verse that comes after it. It's the context to verse 18 where it says we now have received the ministry of reconciliation. And the reason why it's important to understand that and the new creation reality is because many people have narrowed evangelism down to evangelists. And they think that, it, well, I don't have to evangelize because I'm not an evangelist. But that's like saying you don't have to, prof you, you don't have to prophesy because you're not a prophet. You may not be a prophet, but Paul said, I desire that you all prophesy. And it was prophesied in Joel chapter 2, that the Spirit of the Lord will come upon all flesh and your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Amen. And so that same principle is applied to the office of an evangelist. You may not be in the office of an evangelist, but that's okay because Jesus said to everyone, go into all the world, make disciples of all nations. And so the ministry of reconciliation, which is that same ministry that Jesus walked in, that same ministry, huh, that manifested the kingdom of God on the earth, that ministry is delegated to the new creation man. Not to evangelists, but to those who are born of the Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Huh. I could preach on this all night. As you can see, I'm getting carried away. I wasn't playing. I don't like being that guy that talks for like 30 minutes about their stuff, but I actually really love this message, and I'm, I'm very happy to get it into the hands of those who are hungry for this. And so this is available in the back, and we, um, what's out there is what's left, actually. We, you know, we're almost sold out of all of this, and so we want you guys to grab a copy of this. This is only $10, but uh, tonight, who wants this? This is a two day Someone run up here. First one gets it. All right, he's got it. That's why you got to come hungry and sit in the front. Amen. What's your name? Glenn. Glenn, can I pray for you, Glenn? 
Thank you, Father, for Glenn. Lord, I release right now a burden for souls. God, a greater, oh, shatana makura pasta, a greater stirring and hunger for the lost and those that need you the most. Lord, I thank you right now, Father, for gripping his heart, Lord, for the ones that need a touch from heaven. And Lord, I thank you that he will manifest the ascended life with miracles, signs, and wonders, Lord, that these hands would be anointed to heal, that everything these hands touch would come to life. Father, I thank you, Lord, for encountering Glenn, Lord, in this next chapter chapter of life, Lord, for uh, causing him to enter into seasons of visitation, Father, but not just visitation, I pray even, but habitation, Lord, where you would rest and remain on Glenn's life, where you would do a transformative work in Glenn's life, where you would begin to take him into his next glory, Lord, because you've caused us to move from strength to strength and grace to grace and faith to faith, but glory to glory, I prophesy to you right now, Glenn, that you are upgrading, you are leveling up, hallelujah, you are going into new dimensions, new realms, new spheres of influence. I even want to say to you, I see you beginning to find yourself in divine appointments. I see you beginning to... to uh, begin to walk into the right place at the right time and you're going to begin to develop a new sphere of influence it's even like Isaiah 54 where your tent pegs would be extended where you would begin to find yourself having a, a fresh and new capacity hallelujah a fresh new grace to take in and to give but I see this extending of tent pegs like this greater territory this greater influence for you and I just charge you uh, with, with the power of the gospel I charge you right now to infect that sphere of influence with the kingdom of God in Jesus name receive that fresh touch by the power of the Holy Ghost thank you father thank you Jesus let's give Jesus a mighty shout Woo! Shata. glory are you guys in Luke chapter 4 all right now you guys are gonna have to wait on me I gotta open this one-handed all right oh Oh, so um, let me just say this too. I'm a I'm a newlywed. My wife is here with me tonight. Uh, I've got my beautiful woman here, Jordan. Would you want to come up? Let's uh, let's give a clap for my wife, Jordan. My beautiful wife preaches and ministers with me. She'll be laying hands on everyone with me tonight, prophesying, releasing words of knowledge. And um, we've known each other for uh, five years now. Um, we met in ministry school in uh, Nashville, Tennessee, and uh, we were good friends for years and years, but uh, we were both kind of in this season where, you know, God was having a single, but it wasn't until a year ago, actually, a year to this date to be exact, that God redirected me to um, move to the Carolinas, and that's where she was living. She was working with Todd Bentley, and um, we were here in February with Todd, and I was on my internship, but she uh, nannied for Todd and Jessa for their little baby Paris, and, um, but Jordan and I have always been really good friends, and uh, when I moved out to um, the Carolinas, I was going there because I had a scholarship to do Todd's school, but also because Jordan and I were talking again, and I kind of had some ulterior motives, if I could just confess, I, I, <laughs> I, uh, I wanted to see Jordan again and hang out with her, and so I thought it was the perfect opportunity, right? And um, so anyway, I get out to the Carolinas, and it was just, uh, you know, really, really obvious what God was doing. We had such a strong friendship, you know, and we started hanging out, and it was like there was just a different connection that um, there was previously, and we were both in a, a season, or not a season, but we were both, you know, kind of released to enter into pursuit for marriage, things like that. And so anyway, uh, we started dating, and we got engaged really quick, and in fact, we, um, you know, we fell in love really in Malawi, Africa. Uh, we went to uh, Africa with Todd Bentley and the team, and God, you know, uh, used all of us mightily, and, and uh, Todd had both of us preaching in villages, and I watched my wife, you know, win an entire village to the Lord, and just amazing stuff, but we were, yeah, we thank God for that, but... We were there in Malawi, Africa, and that's when we had the talk, you know, about how we wanted to do this with each other the rest of our lives. And so um, we have just a, what we think is an amazing story. We love it, and we love how God brought us back together. And so 
Anyway, my wife's here with me tonight, and you can just share whatever you want to share or just say hi to the people. But I wanted you guys to get an opportunity to see us. Since we're only here for one night, we usually share the load of preaching and, you know, releasing and stuff. And we'll be tag teaming tonight. But I just wanted to, you know, let my wife say hi to you guys and, and say how honored we are to be here. So, Yes. And so my name is Jordan. Some of you know me. Kimmy knows me. I love the tadlocks. And I just wanted to thank um, Pastor John and Karen and Pastor Mike and Monica for having us. And we are just so excited to do um, what we're called to do. We just started our ministry this past summer. And so we've been running with the call of God on our lives. And um, we're not going to stop anytime soon. And we're just hungry to pour out what God's doing in us and to release freedom, to release joy and to do what we're called to do. And so I just want to thank you, and we're just so honored to be here. Really, you guys are family, and we couldn't thank you enough for having us, and um, thank you guys for being here. (laughs) Woo! Give it up for Jordan. (laughs) Amen. I love my wife. So we've been married almost six months. I could just talk about my wife tonight. (laughs) <laughs> I'm I'm just praising God I'm not single anymore, you know, but uh those years are over. <laughs> oh Jesus. <laughs> Woo. I'm gonna get myself in trouble. <laughs> oh Jesus, take the wheel. Uh <laughs> all right. <laughs> Woo. <laughs> Well, <laughs> okay, this is where it begins. Okay, we got to be careful. <laughs> All right, <laughs> you guys in. <laughs> Lord. <laughs> Yay, Jesus. <laughs> this is what I'm talking about. She's getting it. She's going to preach tonight. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Release that realm of visitation tonight. Whoa. (laughs) Signs, wonders, miracles. If you're not getting it yet tonight, that's okay. God will give it to you. <laughs> just uh, put your hand on your neighbor tonight. Let's just do this. Oh, just bless your neighbor. Bless thy neighbor tonight. Whoa. Just release that mighty joy. <laughs> it's okay if you're not getting it yet. Just ask God for it. I've got a <laughs> woo, I've got a couple friends of mine. <laughs> Maybe I'll come into the altars tonight. <laughs> I've got a <sighs> Jesus. I got a few friends of mine um named Mundy Martin and Charlie Champ. How many of you guys have heard of Mundy or Charlie? Some of you guys know them. Good friends of ours. And uh, 
they uh, they went to um, a Rodney Howard Brown meeting when they were really young. Um, they were like in their early 20s, you know, and uh, <laughs> Rodney was ministering in the joy, you know, like he does. And uh, that was the whole reason they came to the meeting. They wanted to go to the meeting to get the joy. And uh, everybody was laughing. Everybody was getting it. But Monday and Charlie, poor, poor Monday and Charlie, they were just sitting there like, like looking around. And they weren't getting it. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, God, everyone's laughing. Everyone's just getting it. And they're like, man, I, I don't get it. What, how, do you, how do you get it? And so finally, Monday got so desperate, he just hopped up on a chair. I'm not going to do it. But he hops up on this chair and he goes, God, I want it. And he's just shouting, God, give it to me right here. He's shouting. And then Rodney comes over there. He's like, Bronda, Bronda, que le mando. And he just touches him and he gets it. He's just laughing, 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 laughing. He gets it. And then Charlie's like sitting there and he's the only one left. And he's like, I, I, he's like, I, now I want it. And he's like, he had to get desperate though, just like Monday. Because he was sitting there going, but God, I want it, I want it. And then finally, this, this holy satisfaction came up on the inside of him. He goes, God, me too, I want it right here. And he's just jumping and shouting, and he gets it too. And he's just whacked, man. And if you guys ever been around the, them, <laughs> they, they carry an amazing realm of joy. That's, that's where I got it. I, I had them lay hands on me, and... That's where I got it from them. You know, I, I never saw the joy of the Lord until I, I went to some of their meetings. And, um, <laughs> but it's transferable tonight. And if you're hungry, God will give it to you. <laughs> because God is going to release an oil for destiny in the house tonight. But it's not just any oil. It's the oil of gladness for mourning. It's that garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness tonight. Because <laughs> we don't have to live as weak and defeated Christians. Amen. We don't have to live depressed and so serious all the time. Oh, man, this is the glad tidings of a happy gospel. Glad tidings of a happy God. <laughs> and, uh, you know, the Lord spoke to me once. Um, I was in a meeting, and, and the joy is moving and stuff, and there are some people who, you know, um, I hate using this term, and, and I, don't, I, don't, I, I try not to use it as much as possible, but they were simply giving you that religious spirit vibe, you know. I don't like calling people religious or anything like that, but they're, they're, it is true. Some people need to get free from some religion, you know. And uh, the Lord spoke to me, and he said, Son, the fruit of the Spirit will no longer be a forbidden fruit in the church. Because it's been, it's been treated like the only emotion that we can show in church is sorrow and, and, and seriousness. But heaven is the happiest place we'll ever experience. Amen. It's the ha and there are going to be many disappointed Christians when they get to heaven. They're going to cross over and they're, they're going to be like looking around for their Lord and Savior. And their Lord and Savior is going to be gazing at them with a big smile and a big laugh. <laughs> I've been waiting for you this whole time. Come in. And man, my Jesus is a happy Jesus. <laughs> hey, ha. Huh. Well, let's preach on Jesus tonight. Oh. Are you guys in Luke chapter 4? All right, let's read this. Now that everyone's all loosened up. <laughs> Luke chapter 4, verse 16. This is a powerful passage of scripture. And um, Jesus had just come out of the wilderness from praying and fasting for 40 days and 40 nights. And um, I'm going to just read this. Verse 16 of Luke chapter 4. You ready? It says, And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And as was his custom, he entered the synagogue on the Sabbath and stood up to read. And the book, say book, and the book of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. And he opened the book and found the place where it was written. The spirit of the sovereign Lord is upon me because he has anointed me. Ha, say anointed me. 
He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and the recovery of sight to the blind, to set free those who are oppressed, to proclaim the favorable year of the Lord. Ha! And he closed the book, say book, he closed the book and gave it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. And he began to say to them, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. Say fulfilled. Now the word fulfilled means something achieved that is desired, promised, predicted, or prophesied. Say prophesied. It's really important to see what's taking place here. And I love the, Luke, the gospel of Luke because it is the most descriptive gospel of the process of Jesus' life and ministry. You get to see into the life of Jesus more in the gospel of Luke than you do probably in other, any other gospel because it has the most details and it's very thorough. And it, and it shows you how he was raised, how he was brought up, some of the things he did before his public ministry. And what I like in the book of Luke 2.52, is it says that Jesus grew, say grew. Actually, I believe some translations say he continually grew. He continually grew in wisdom and in stature and in favor with both God and man. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ grew in wisdom, stature, favor, say favor, with both, say both, God and man. You would understand why Jesus would have to grow in favor with man. But it actually said that our Lord Jesus Christ had to grow in favor with God as well. And Jesus Christ progressively grew in wisdom and in stature. Jesus was a man who was not just uh, the Son of God. He was the Son of God. Don't misinterpret what I'm saying. But he was a man filled with God. He was a God man. He was a man like Philippians 2 says. He was a God who stripped himself of his deity. And humbled himself as a bondservant. Ha. Huh. He was a God man. He was God in the flesh. God in the form of a man. Who, who was possessed by the Holy Spirit. Totally controlled and, and filled with the presence and power of God. He was someone who, who had to learn the voice of God just like we do. He was someone who had to grow in revelation just like we do. He was a man who was tempted in everything like we're tempted in. That's why it says in Hebrews that he is a perfect mediator, a perfect savior. Huh? Because he, it's, it's not like he can't relate to us, amen. He's experienced everything we've experienced, walked through everything we've walked through. But the difference is that he did it perfect. And he, as a perfect man who knew no sin, became sin so that we could become the righteousness of God in Christ. But the, I love talking about the person of Jesus because he modeled what it looks like to be a man in right relationship with God, right? He was the prototype. He was the blueprint of the new creation reality. He was the original son of many sons. He was a son of glory who desired to bring many sons into glory. Hallelujah. He prayed in John chapter 17, Father, just as you and I are one, I desire that they be one. <laughs> and Father, the glory that you gave me, I want them to have it. Jesus. Born of the glory. And so what we need to see here is that we need to see two things. First of all, we need to see that Jesus Christ is perfect theology. Perfect theology. The reason I say that is because he is the expressed image of the invisible God. Hebrews 1.3 says he's the expressed image of God's glory. Jesus said, if you've seen me, You've seen the Father. If you want to know what the Father's like, you look at the Son. You look at Jesus Christ. You look at the life that he lived. You look at the character and nature that he represents. <laughs> if you want to see God, if you want to know what God's like, you look at Jesus. And so, one, he's perfect theology of who God is. The perfect example of our Father. But two, it says that he is the firstborn. Say firstborn. Amongst all creation. The firstborn amongst many brethren. Jesus Christ is your elder brother. He is the first son, many sons. He was a seed buried into the ground so that he could reproduce himself in the earth. Jesus died so that he could multiply himself. Come on, somebody. And so Jesus Christ not only perfectly represents who the Father is, but I'm here to tell you tonight that he perfectly represents who you are. 
Jesus Christ models exactly what it looks like to be a man totally filled with God. A man totally under the influence of another world. Huh. Totally walking under an open heaven. Totally mantled by the Spirit of God. It said that he had the Spirit of God that was without measure. Huh. And so Jesus created a precedent in his life. A standard in his life of what normal looked like. But then he says in John 14, 12, he says, truly, truly, I say to you, I'm going away now, but you will, I'm butchering it, I'm not quoting it right, but he says, you will, you will walk in greater works. Greater works. We are a people with a greater works mandate. We are a people who are not under a dead religion. We are a people who have supernatural divine power living on the inside of us. We've become partakers of the divine nature. You're, you're not the old you like you used to be. You're not what you think you are. You are divine. You are supernatural. You are one with Christ Jesus. That's why the Bible says, if, if, if any man be grafted into Christ, he is one spirit with him. It is in him you live, move, have your being. Man, I could preach this all night. I, I don't know about you. I get happy about this. This is the, this is the gospel. You, I, I'm, I'm tired of hearing what we're not. I'm tired of hearing what we can't do. It's time that we release revelation on the endless possibility that belongs to the believer. Jesus. Because there's a whole... Oh, Jesus. Can I be myself tonight? There, there's a whole world called the kingdom of heaven. There's an entire realm that you, you, you are a part of. That is your family. That's why it says in Ephesians chapter 3, there's a family in heaven, a family on earth. You are a, you are a part of a kingdom family. My goodness. So it's, a, it's important and foundational to understand this about the person of Jesus, his purpose on the earth, and what exactly he was doing. And it's important that we look at the life of Jesus and we Look at him in a way where we can relate. Because the point of the incarnation wasn't so that, so that you could be reminded of how much you need to be like God. No, no, no. Jesus came on the earth to remind you that you are like God. That you were created in his image and likeness. That you have his DNA. You have his likeness. And you have a supernatural potential. And so he came on the earth to remind humanity of what it looks like to be a son of God. He was reminding those who fell under first Adam what it looks like to be in last Adam. Amen. And so Jesus is on the earth. He just finished a 40-day fast in the wilderness. And he comes out of the temple. He picks up this scroll. And he begins to proclaim what was written on this scroll, this prophetic scroll from the prophet Isaiah. And it says, today, the spirit of the sovereign Lord has come upon me. He has anointed me, me. He has anointed me to preach the good news. He has anointed me to open the eyes of the blind. He has anointed me huh, to set the captives free, to proclaim. Somebody say proclaim. To proclaim the good and acceptable year of the Lord. He proclaimed what was written on this scroll and then put it down and said, this is fulfilled. Come on, somebody. What we need to see here are three things in the life of Jesus. There is intimacy, there is identity, and there is destiny. Jesus modeled three things. Intimacy, identity, destiny. Intimacy unveils our identity. And identity cultivates our prophetic destiny. Every one of us has a destiny in God. Callings, gifted, giftings, they're given without repentance. Every person. A promise. Huh. But you can't know your God-given destiny until you recognize your heavenly identity. Until you know exactly who you are, what you are, Who's you belong, whose you are, who you belong to. Amen. You can't fully step into it without recognizing those things. But then there, it goes a little deeper. You can't even know who exactly you are until you know who he is. 
That's why the more you begin to look into the person of Jesus, the more you begin to enter into the promise of 2 Corinthians 3.18. As we behold him in a mirror, we too become transfigured. Say transfigured. We become transformed, changed into that same image. What image? The expressed image of his likeness. The expressed image of God's glory. The same image of Christ, you become changed when you behold Christ as in a mirror. That's why Jordan and I have called our ministry Mirror Image Ministries because we begin to grab a hold of the revelation that when we behold Christ, when we keep it centered on Christ, when we preach Jesus, there is a transformative work that begins to take place. If I can get, your, if I can get you a revelation of Christ, I can get you to manifest Christ. But We become transformed into that same image from glory to glory, hallelujah, by the Spirit. And this is the work that takes place in our lives. We progressively grow glory to glory. As I said earlier, Jesus prayed that you would have glory. It doesn't make sense to go from glory if you're not already at glory. I can't go from Madeira to Lancaster where we're going next to preach if I'm not in Madeira. I can't go from Madeira to Lancaster if I'm not here, right? I can't go from glory to glory if I'm not in the glory. And so he's seated you in a place, and that's a place you access by faith. It says in Romans 5, 2, you've received access by faith into the grace in which we stand, which is in the glory. And so anyway, I'm throwing a lot of scriptures, and I, I don't want you guys to enter into an intellectual realm tonight. I want you to grab a hold of this as revelation, because revelation produces manifestation. Or let me say it this way. An inward revelation will produce an outward manifestation. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. And so I could go more into that. But what's happening is intimacy, identity, destiny. Jesus is in the synagogue and he's proclaiming what's written in this book or scroll, depending on what translation you have. In those days, they didn't have books. They had scrolls. And he's proclaiming what's written on this scroll, but he's not just proclaiming anything. He's proclaiming his identity. And he's not just reading a dead piece of literature, but he's reading a scroll that's laced with prophetic DNA. It's something that the prophet Isaiah prophesied and spoke out 400 some odd years before it ever even, before the Messiah ever even came onto the earth. You understand, he was proclaiming today The spirit of the sovereign Lord has come upon me. Watch this. Me, 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 me. He's proclaiming this about himself. And this is important to recognize because many people look at what happens afterwards. Jesus begins his ministry and he begins to cast devils out. He begins to heal the sick. He begins to raise the dead. He begins to do all of the kingdom works. And people... Look at what begins to happen in Jesus' life and they go all the way back to, uh, to the Jordan. And they think, well, yeah, it's because he, you know, received a baptism of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit came upon him like a dove. Or some people say, well, you know, Jesus was led in the wilderness by the Spirit and he came out with the power of the Holy Spirit. So actually, I think he started moving in kingdom signs, wonders, and miracles because of the fasting and prayer lifestyle that he had. But I want to take it a little bit further and say, what if Jesus began to come into alignment with everything that's written in the prophet Isaiah because he proclaimed everything that was written on his destiny scroll? He proclaimed and said, today, this is fulfilled. That means from this point on, it's happening. From this point on, this is who I am. This is what I do. Hallelujah. And so we need to recognize this because it's not just Jesus. Every one of us has a destiny scroll. That's what I like to call it. And that's what I believe the R called. It says in Psalms 139 that God has seen our unformed substance. And in his book, say book, were written all of our days, even before they ever were. God has seen our book. And he wrote in it before the foundation of the world. That's why you see so many scriptures in the Bible that talk about before the foundation of the world. 
And I, I don't want to get into a big theological thing because it can be kind of mind-bending, but I, I like to simplify it like this. When it comes to predestination, when it comes to knowing us before the foundation of the world, it works like this. Romans 8.29 says we're predestined according to foreknowledge. Say foreknowledge. Foreknowledge. That means God knows in advance. Foreknowledge. That's what you're predestined according to. And so, in other words, God can look at us right now while looking at Abraham and Isaac, while looking at the second coming of Christ. Because God oversees the timeline. God sees it all. He, he, he just simply knows. And he can know it without manipulating man's choice. He can know it without removing your free will. And so that means that we have freedom to say yes or no when it comes to our destiny. God simply knows in advance. Okay, I don't want that to. <laughs> I don't want that to get. I don't want to get too heady tonight. Um, <laughs> whew, okay, so Jesus, Jesus, he's proclaiming <laughs> this prophetic identity, this prophetic scroll, and what I believe is happening is, is, is he's becoming the first living epistle. It says in Second Corinthians three that we are living letters, living epistles, we are living words. Amen. Not written with, you know, tablets of stone. But with the Spirit of God. Not with, you know, ink, but with His Spirit on our human hearts. Amen. And so Jesus was becoming the embodiment of the prophetic word that was written over His life even before the foundation of the world. And that's why Jesus was a man of timing. He was always saying, my time has not come. The time is and the time is now. Have you noticed that in the scriptures? He's always talking about his timing. Because he was someone that understood times and seasons. He was someone that recognized it. And that's why he's saying, I now have an anointing to proclaim. Say proclaim. Proclaim the good and acceptable year of the Lord. The favorable year of the Lord. Which actually, when you look historically, that's the year of Jubilee. It's the year of, of, of Jubilee which proclaims freedom, favor, blessings, release from captivity. He's saying, I've now been anointed to proclaim this. That's one of the things that comes with the anointing. And that's why the anointing is so important. That's why I'm talking to you about the need for fresh oil on our lives. Continual fresh oil from heaven. Because there's something about the anointing that makes a difference in our lives. There's something about the anointing when God anoints us that it commissions us to walk in our destinies. We're all called and gifted. That's without repentance. But what about the chosen? Many are called, few are chosen. What about the chosen? How do we go from called to chosen? I'm convinced it's the anointing of the Spirit. Jesus could not do what he was called to do, to do until the anointing, the Spirit of the Sovereign Lord has come upon me. He has anointed me. Come on, somebody. I love the anointing. Shoo! You want to preach? Get the anointing. It'll cause you to preach good news. You want to open blind eyes? You got to get it. You got to get in contact with that anointing. You got to let Holy Spirit begin to baptize you, begin to smear you fresh. Amen. Huh. Shoo. I remember. I remember in my life um, a few years ago in the year 2014. I just want to share this quick testimony of what God has done in my life, and it goes with what I'm telling you tonight. Um, in 2014. I had just finished up uh, two years of ministry school in Tennessee with uh, a man named Jeff Jansen. How many of you guys know who Jeff Jansen is? Anyone in here tonight? Uh, Global Fire Ministries, Nashville, Tennessee. And uh, Jordan and I went to his school and, and finished his um, finished his two-year training. And um, we had a big celebration thing. And that night, I went to bed, and I had this dream. And this was on April 20th, 2014. I want you to remember this. April 20th, 2014. I had this dream where, and I'll spare it because I don't want to go too long or in too much depth with this, but to give you the Reader's Digest version of this dream, I found myself walking through these double doors. And these double doors flung open, and they were wide, and when they opened up, there was a, an immense amount of light that began to come through the doorways. It was so bright that it was blinding me. And I was walking through this doorway 
which I believe is, you know, a destiny doorway. I believe it's a picture of destiny and open doors, right? And so I'm walking through this doorway, and as I'm crossing over through the door, I'm blinded by all this light. And next thing I know, when I cross over, I am in another country. And I'm in what looks like an African country. Now I know it's Africa, now that I've been there. But um, at that time, I'd never left the United States. And uh, I, I was in another country, and I'm looking around, and I'm like, what's going on, you know? And it was one of those dreams where it felt very, very real. Can anyone relate to that? Um, it felt really, really real. And I was in this place, and I'm looking around, and I see this mighty wheat field. This harvest field, which is a picture of a harvest of souls, right? I'm looking at this harvest field, and I see uh, on the other end of the field there's this house. And I just knew for whatever reason that's where I was supposed to be going. That was where I was walking to. I knew that I needed to get to this house on the other side of the field. And I'm, but I'm looking around, and I'm you know, checking the place out, and I turn around, and I see all these little huts behind me. And as I turn my face around, all of a sudden the Lord Jesus is in front of me. And I'm staring face to face at the Lord. And the Lord's looking in my eyes and I'm looking at his eyes. And honestly, you guys, I can't even begin to describe. It's of no earthly description, our Lord Jesus. I can't even begin to, you know, talk about his features or anything like that. I do believe that Jesus presents himself different ways to different people. But um, he, he's the same Lord. Amen. And he appeared to me in a way that I, I can't even honestly describe. He was very beautiful, yet, yet his lordship was so strong. His holiness was so strong, yet he was very inviting. And I was drawn to him immediately. But he looked at me and he said something that forever changed my life. And he said, um, if you want to follow me, you'll take the narrow road. And he showed me that there was this path that winded around the field and went to the house. And he said, if you want to follow me, you'll take the narrow road. And so as soon as I made the decision in my heart to take the narrow road, the scene shifted. And now I'm walking on this path with the Lord. And he stops on the path and he grabs a, a purple robe. He grabs this robe and he puts it over me. And I said, Lord, what is this? And he said, this is my love. And then he reaches in his pocket and he hands me a set of keys. And I said, what is this? And he said, these are the keys to the nations. And now, as soon as he handed me that and said that, I woke up from the experience to a text message from my cell phone provider. And it said, your phone is now ready to go global. You can go anywhere international and make phone calls. <laughs> and so I woke up with that kind of text message and... Uh, I immediately wrote down everything that I saw, everything that I experienced. But that morning, you guys, I was um, getting ordained by Jeff Jansen. And uh, I felt like it was a real day of promotion. And, you know, I believe the Lord promotes, not man, of course. But it was a real day where I felt like God was promoting and, and causing me to level up in, in the Lord. And um, I had this new and fresh promise over my destiny. Whereas, you know, before I never really saw myself doing anything international. I, like I said, I'd never left the country before. And uh, I always thought that I was going to have a nice, neat little teaching ministry. You know, that I was just going to be a, a teacher, maybe at a local church. I never saw myself, you know, going globe trotting all around the world or anything like that. I never envisioned myself being in Madeira, California, preaching to you guys, um, any of that. And that was in a time where I was still very, very afraid of public speaking. I couldn't even preach or talk in the microphone or pray in the microphone, any of that, you know, just to give you an idea of where I was at. And so, but what happened is the Lord began to take me on a journey where he changed my heart and he was giving me this heart for everything that I saw. He was giving me a heart for the lost and a heart for other people groups. And he was kind of causing me to go through this season where I was becoming more and more adventurous and more and more open to doing the work of an evangelist. And that's when I started going out on the streets and just praying for people and, you know, just uh, growing in who I am. And, and I begin to look into the life of Jesus and I begin to see myself uh, finding my true and right identity. And, you know, I started to pursue going to other countries. And I bought a passport and I was pursuing these trips and uh, nothing was opening up. It was like a complete contradiction. 
right? How many of you guys have ever had that before where you get a prophetic promise and then the exact opposite happens? And it's because the Lord will encourage you beforehand. He will speak into your life before the contradiction happens so that you may strengthen yourself in the Lord and not get discouraged. Just like David. David had a promise that he would be anointed as king. But yet there was a 15-year process where he could have lost heart, like he said in the uh, Psalms. But he, uh, he would have lost heart had he not believed that he would see the goodness of God in the land of the living. Amen. And so sometimes there's a process where we grow in wisdom and stature and favor with both God and man. There's a process where we're, we're continually growing in revelation, and it's unto an appointed time. It's unto an appointed time where preparation meets destiny. Because it's inevitable that destiny is going to knock on our doors. And when we open, the question is, are you ready? And so I was doing everything I could to be ready. I was saying, Lord, make me ready. I had the passport. I even expedited it. I didn't have any trips opening up, but I expedited that thing. I wanted it as soon as possible. Paid the extra money for it. I wanted to hold it in my hand. I even put it under my pillow. I'm just kidding. But, like, I, uh, <laughs> I wanted that thing, and I was looking for every opportunity that I could get to go to another country, but it just wasn't opening up. And then finally, um, you know, months go by, and I get this opportunity to go to the United Kingdom. And... Um, I pursue it, and I feel the Lord breathing on it. And just to make a long story short, um, everything came in financially that I needed to go, and I was set. And I was preparing for this trip, and it was going to be like a three-month-long trip. you know. So I was really like um, excited because I was really stepping out. It wasn't just like a week-long you know, international trip for my first trip. It was three months. And, uh, you know, I was only 21, I believe, and so I was, like, ecstatic. And anyway, I'm preparing, I'm praying, all that, all that fun stuff. And the Lord says, I want you to look back in your journal at that encounter that you had. And I look at the date on my dream slash experience, and it was April 20th, 2014. And then I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute. And I look at my email that has my itinerary for my trip. And the day I was scheduled to land in London, England, was April 20th, 2015, a year to the day that the encounter took place. And so how many guys know there's no such thing as coincidences with God? No such thing. You know, in the Bible, it talks about timing. It talks about, you know, the timing of God, the divine timing of God. And it's the word kairos. There's the word chronos. In the New Testament, which is a word for chronological time. And then there's kairos, which is the divine time of the Lord. And the ancient Greeks actually believed that when you enter into a kairos moment, that there is a heavenly window of opportunity that's opened up where unseen realities from the kingdom of heaven can manifest. And I believe God takes us into these places where we're at the right place at the right time, meeting the right people, doing the right thing. And it's the ordering of our steps. We can make our plans, but the Lord orders our steps. And this is what was modeled in the life of Jesus. Even his death was something that was prepared before the foundation of the world. He was the slain lamb before the foundation of the world. There, 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 and that's not just with Jesus, but it's with you and me. There's something divine that God wants you to, to come in alignment with. Something of your destiny that God wants you to come into congruence with. And there is an anointing even tonight where God will cause us to become ready. That's what happened with the foolish and wise virgins. They were offered oil. But what makes the foolish virgins different than the wise virgins is that the wise virgins bought the oil. And what happened is they were ready for the king to come. They were ready in season and out of season. That, that's what the anointing of God will do. It will cause you to be anointed to preach the good news at any given moment, to open blind eyes. It doesn't matter where you're at in the store, in Walmart, in the gas station. You can pop blind eyes open. You can set captives free. You can proclaim and speak into people's lives. And that's what I want to talk about as I'm closing. I'm not going to go too long tonight. We've got a lot of stuff to do. But I want to briefly just talk about the power of proclamation. Because... All of this is fun. All of this is great. But until you believe it and speak it, it's not going to happen. Until, there's something about it, my friends. There's something about proclaiming. 
There's something about the prophetic decree. We're not just people that are called to hope and ask. I love asking. Ask and you shall receive. But there's something about proclaiming. There's something about that ministry of binding and loosing, using the kingdom keys that Jesus gave us. Amen. There's something powerful, my friends, about decreeing a thing and seeing it established in the earth. This is what was seen in the life of Jesus. But also, there was a man by the name of Jeremiah. And he had a similar story. Jeremiah, I knew you before the foundation of the world. And I commissioned you. I called you to be a prophet to the nations. But Jeremiah's excuse was, but I'm just a youth. I'm just a boy. I had my own excuses. I couldn't talk well. I'm just a youth. I had all these excuses. And Jeremiah says, I'm just a a boy. I'm just a youth. But you know what it says in Jeremiah 1 verse 9? It says, the Lord put his hand on his mouth. And filled him with his words. Come on, somebody. When the Lord fills your mouth with his very word, you can trust that it's no longer your voice speaking. You can trust that the words that you're proclaiming are the word of the Lord. There's something, oh my goodness. God wants to fill your mouth. God wants to begin to cause your words to not just be dead words, but to be words like Samuel, where they don't fall to the ground. Because we have the ability to not just predict future things, we have the ability to change future things, to change future events. We have the ability to prophetically agree, let it be so, and it shall be so. I'm not talking about just speaking flippant things. I'm talking about when the word of the Lord comes to you, the Lord will fill your mouth, And it will cause you to prophetically proclaim, this is a year of jubilee. This is a year of the good and acceptable, favorable year of the Lord. Year of blessing. A year of release. A year of no more captivity. A year of no more poverty. A year of abundance in the name of Jesus. We have the ability to prophetically speak. Your words, your tongue, contains the power of life and death. You know, quantum physicists are actually confirming that our words contain matter. That our very words have the ability to either produce life or death. They've done it over uh, test subjects like plants. They took plant A and plant B and they spoke life and death over them. Over plant A, they spoke blessings. They put worship music on around the plant. And the plant uh, prospered one, 10 out of every 10 tries. But with plant B, they spoke death over it. They cursed it. They played satanic music over it. They did all these horrible things to plant B, and it shriveled up and died 10 out of 10 times. And what science is beginning to confirm is that our very words contain matter to change circumstances and to release healing properties in our bodies. It's just confirming what the Bible has said all along. And so God put... His word in Jeremiah's mouth, and then he appointed him as uh, a voice to kings and nations. And he gave them the ability to pull down, to destroy, to pluck up, but then to rebuild and to plant. Amen. Which sounds like binding and loosing. He gave them the ability to dismantle the things that need to be dismantled in the demonic realm. And the ability to release kingdom authority, kingdom power, kingdom establishment. And this is when it said to Jeremiah, God said, I'm now watching over my word, ready to perform it. God's watching over his word, over your life, over your family, over your business, over your church and your ministry. and He's waiting to perform it. But we need to be people who will put a word on the promise to make it come flesh. Come on, somebody. I want to show you something really quick, just really quick, and we'll close. I'm going to read one more passage, and this is from Isaiah 61. We usually read the first passage that Jesus quoted, and then we close Isaiah and say, praise God. But there's, you know, there's a remaining chapter, and I can't read all of the chapter, but the remaining chapter continues to speak about the anointing. It continues to give examples of what the anointing does. And this is what I want to read right now. The anointing 
is to grant those who mourn in Zion, giving them a garland instead of ashes. Listen to this. The oil of joy, the oil of gladness instead of mourning. The mantle of praise instead of a spirit of fainting. So they will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified, that they will rebuild the ancient ruins. Listen to this. They will raise up the former devastations and they will repair the ruined cities, the desolations of many generations. I want you to see something right here that this anointing, this anointing for destiny scrolls, if you will, this this anointing to discover our personal destiny is not just meant to be on a personal basis. How many of you guys believe that cities have destinies? Regions have destinies, states have destinies, nations have destinies. How many of you guys believe America has a destiny? How many of you guys believe that God's hand is still on this country, despite what anybody else prophesies or anybody else falsely uh, uh, says? I believe that God's hand is still on this land. In what we see here is the same anointing to preach, the same anointing to open blind eyes, set captives free, and to proclaim gives us the ability to restore broken cities, to restore desolate uh, places, the devastations of many generations. We have the anointing of God to proclaim, to speak, to decree a thing, to change things in the spiritual realm. We have the ability, Harvey, bow down. Irma, bow down. Jose, don't even touch our land. We have the uh, divine ability, hallelujah, to speak these things out. Madeira has a destiny. This region has a, has a destiny. But Madeira, like Romans 8 19, is earnestly groaning and waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. I believe that a move of God is eminent in this area. And I'm not just saying it to say it. I'm believing that a move of the Spirit is eminent in Madeira. And I'm prophesying it. I'm, I'm, I believe it, but we can talk about revival all night, but what we need is a revival in our secret place. We need a revival in our prayer closets. We need a revival in our intimacy, identity, and destiny. We need to recognize who we are. We need to proclaim what's written on our scrolls. We need to uh, come into a place where we receive that fresh oil from heaven. Whoo, Jesus, that oil of gladness. Because the thing is, is that there are too many barriers in our lives right now. Things like mourning, things like heaviness, things like depression. And they come to blind and distract us from our destinies. They come to, to, to paralyze us under the spirit of fear. To where we don't even move or try anything. To where we never uh, make a decision to do anything different or new. We can't resist change. We can't resist the transformative power of God. Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, lift up your hands tonight. Here comes a wave of the sweet presence of God. Lord, I thank you tonight that you're fulfilling your word. Your word doesn't fall to the ground and return to you void. And I thank you, Lord, that when we speak your word, it's like a seed where you begin to conceive in the Spirit to birth the miraculous. Father, I thank you tonight that there would be a mighty realm, Lord, of healing, deliverance, freedom. And it says it is for freedom that you've been set free. I thank you tonight that a wave of freedom and liberation is coming huh, so that they may walk in their calling, so that they may walk in their destiny. I thank you tonight that there is a release of the captives.
Sweet Holy Spirit. Sweet Holy Spirit. Here's what I'd like to do. We've got a lot that we're going to do tonight. We're going to pray for everybody in here, my wife and I. And uh, I want to call out a few specific things that I believe um, God wants to touch tonight. But um, I, I want to give a quick opportunity for those who are led and those who would be so kind to sow into who Jordan and I are and to sow into this word tonight. And I'm not going to do a long preach on the offering because I believe, you know, I'm amongst a, a, a group of generous people. But uh, I do want to proclaim something over you in the spirit of proclamation, in the spirit of decree. And, and this is a word that God really birthed in me when I came to California in February. Um, Todd Bentley, I was interning for him, and he asked me to get an offering message ready. And I've never really preached an offering message. I've always just, I, to be honest, I used to be kind of awkward with offering messages. I was kind of more the, there's a box in the back kind of guy, you know. I tried to tiptoe around it and... Um, but the Lord birthed a message on the inside of me for offerings. And it was a promise that he was giving uh, right before Jordan and I got married. You see, I was on the road with Todd and I was having a hard time uh, having the resources to stay on the road with Todd. I was really actually struggling a lot, you know, because we had to pay for rental cars, hotels, and all that, all that stuff. And it's not just we were here for, you know, a weekend. We were on the road. I was on the road for a month and a half. You know, having to find the resources for these things, having to trust God. And I was seeking the Lord for breakthrough one day. And the Lord said to me, he said, Alex, I'm, I'm not going to give you a financial breakthrough. And I said, Lord, what do you mean? I'm your son. Don't tell me no. <laughs> no. I, I was like, Lord. Uh, and he goes, I'm no longer giving you financial breakthroughs because I want you to financially break out. And he spoke this word into me where he said, I'm going to begin to cause you to abound. I'm going to begin to cause you not just to have breakthroughs, even though breakthroughs are great. How many guys know, you know, breakthroughs are amazing. And I'm not saying God's against breakthrough, but I'm, I'm saying there's something greater than just getting bailed out of our financial prison, prisons time after time. See, I, I know what it's like to, you know, be waiting for the check to come to be able to pay bills and all that stuff. I know what it's like to, you know, be a single broke college student living on ramen. And I've been there, and uh, but the Lord has been speaking to me about how we are not just called to know him as Jehovah Jireh, which is the Lord our provider. Thank God he is Jehovah Jireh. He's a good father. He knows our needs before we even ask. We don't have to pull God's arm. When it comes to blessings and things like that. God's a good God. In his, he will come through. And so I have no doubt about that. He will come through. And on the other hand though. The Lord has been challenging me. To see him not just as Jehovah Jireh. But as El Shaddai. The God of more than enough. You see in Exodus. We see all the Israelites. And they're wandering around the wilderness. And they're, you know, having daily provision given to them from God. And we love all the signs and wonders that take place where manna comes and water from rocks and all that. You know, but how many guys know they were destined to be in a land that flowed with milk and honey? And Moses actually tried to introduce God to the Israelites in Exodus chapter 6 as El Shaddai. He said, hey Israelites, this is your God. In his name is El Shaddai, the God of more than enough, the many-breasted one, which actually is a picture of multiple streams of resource, multiple streams of, uh, of resources and income. How many guys want that? Multiple streams. And the, but the picture here is that I want you to know God, and he is El Shaddai, more than enough. Not just Jehovah Jireh, you know, a, a, the God of breakthrough, the God of provision. God will do that. But he wants us to abound. We are called to life and life more abundantly. And this is a promise Jordan and I have been standing on, you know, because we have big dreams and big desires in our hearts. We're going to the Philippines next May. 
And uh, we actually just confirmed it a couple nights ago that we're going to be going to China as well afterwards. Now, we can see this in front of you guys, but on social media and all that, we're not going to be able to really talk about where we're going because you can get persecuted and get in trouble. But we're, you know, we, our big picture is on an international scale. We love the nations. We love seeing souls saved. We have in our hearts to do crusades. And um, I'm just going to share a quick testimony with you guys, if you will. Just bear with me. Just a quick testimony to stir you up in your giving. And by the way, um, my wife, she has uh, offering envelopes for those of you who would prefer to give by credit or debit. And so if you need one of those, you can raise your hand. My wife has those. And, um, and uh, if you're writing checks tonight, you can write that to Alex Parkinson. Um, we're so new in the ministry that we, you know, we're in the process of getting our 501c3, all of that stuff. And uh, so that's not established yet, but we're handling it with as much integrity as we can in that transitional time. But um, how many of you guys know the testimony of Jesus Christ is the spirit of prophecy? Okay. Have checks written out to BCM. Sorry about that. BCM, you could scribble out that and write them to BCM. Thank you for that. But... <laughs> The testimony of Jesus Christ is the spirit of prophecy. And what that means is that when we share testimonies, that there's actually a prophetic release attached to it. And for those who have the ears to hear the testimony, they can receive what is being testified as a prophetic promise to them. They can receive it unto them as, wow, God gave you a brand new house. God will give me a brand new house. Because really, my testimony is Mike's testimony, and Mike's testimony is my testimony. My testimony is your testimony. They're all in the book of remembrance in heaven. They're all, uh, they're all testimonies unto the Lord. Amen? Yeah. And so when you prophesy, when you share testimonies, you're prophetically releasing promises. Wow, God did this for me. He's going to do it to you. And so last year, I believe that too. Woo! I'm a believing believer tonight. Um, I'm going to share this real quick and we'll transition. Last year, um, I received an invitation to go to India. And I've, I love India. I've always felt called to go to India. I was waiting for the door to open. But when the door opened, I didn't know that it was going to open two weeks before the time to leave. And so I had this urgent uh, invitation to go to India and this urgent need to... Um, get the resources to be able to go. And I didn't know what to do. Honestly, I didn't have faith that, you know, the resources would come to be able to do this trip. And I prayed about it, and the Lord wouldn't let it leave me. I, I couldn't give up on it. I knew that my, he knew that my heart was for India. I knew that my heart was for India. So anyway, I, you know, asked God, what do you want me to do? And he said, I just want you to make a video, two minutes, just express your need. You know, we have not because we ask not. And I just said, all right, I, I really don't like doing this. I don't like doing broadcasts or like, you know, little videos or things like that. It's not my favorite thing. But I said, okay, God, I'm going to do it. And uh, I do it. And then someone messages me, a friend of mine from Australia. I'd met him on a previous trip in Indonesia. And he's a businessman. And he said, Alex, um, I saw your video and the Lord spoke to me and put it on my heart to cover your entire trip to India. Yeah, praise God for that. Yes. Now, but it gets, it gets better. See, this was a financial breakthrough for me. This was breakthrough to be able to go into a country that was close to my heart, that still is close to my heart. And I was thanking God for it, and I thanked him, and I said, you know, how can I pray for you? We pray for all of our partners and everyone who donates and stuff. And I said, but how can I, how can I really pray for you and agree with you, you know? And he said, um... Well, I sowed in faith, just trusting God with my business. And so if you wouldn't mind, just pray for my business. And so I said, okay, I'll, I'll pray for your business. And that night, I took time to earnestly pray. I, I sought the Lord. I even got prophetic words for his business, all that. And um, I shared with him what I saw. I prayed over him. And uh, the next day, say the next day. The next day, he messages me. And I don't know if you guys are ready for this. He messaged me the next day, and he said, Alex, you won't believe what just happened. 
He said, my business just received a contract for $1 million. $1 million. And what I want you to see here tonight is that for me, it was a financial breakthrough. But for him, it was a financial breakout. It totally changed his lifestyle. Totally changed. He, he now had the freedom and the ability to go do crusades in, in Peru and Colombia. He had a totally different lifestyle because God began to bless his business, and it's continued to be blessed. Amen. And this is what I'm talking about, you guys. I'm not trying, listen, I'm not trying to hype anybody up or hype an offering message. I'm just telling you that Jordan and I practice what we preach when it comes to giving. We give in faith, we sow in faith, and we, we honor the principle of sowing where we want to go, you know, and we're just, we just trust the Lord. But we've seen incredible, miraculous things, and this is the word that God's put on our finances for this season, is that breakout. No longer breakthrough, breakout. And so let's stand up tonight. I don't know if they've already received it, but I just want to pray over you. And, and you know what? Before we pray, I just honestly want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. You know, Pastor Mike and Monica and Pastor John and Karen, we, we, I've, I've so loved tonight, you know. And um, we're really thankful to be here and we're thankful uh, for your giving and your generosity tonight. And so... Um, like, I, like we announced earlier, there is also product in the back, and we'll be both back there later on to talk to you guys and get to know you. And so I'll just mention that before we get too carried away here. But let me pray over your giving tonight. Father, and you could hold your seed up to heaven. Father, we lift up our seed to you tonight like fishes and loaves, and we ask you, Lord, that you would let your breath blow on our seeds tonight, that you would let your life be released tonight. That you would cause life more abundant to be released on these seeds and on their giving and generosity. Father, I thank you right now even for the Deuteronomy 111 promise. That multiplication of a thousandfold would begin to take place for every person, Father. Lord, I thank you that blessings is swallowing up lack and corruption and poverty right now. That favor is defeating Right now, Lord, uh, uh, the lack of resources, I thank you that that's a thing in the past for every person tonight, Lord. And we just release, Lord, your abundant hand, Lord, to come over businesses tonight. Lord, just as the testimony was released, Lord, I declare that there is a prophetic release now for every person in faith for their business. Lord, let, their, let, let, let everything they touch turn to gold tonight, Father. Let everything they touch uh, give you glory. Lord, we, we know that we Work not unto man, but unto God. And so I thank you, Lord, that as your people work unto you, and as they submit their giving to you, Lord, that it's not without intent. It's not, it's not, uh, it's not pointless, Lord. I thank you that there is an anointing tonight to see things change. In Jesus' name, I speak it over every person. Let there be a release of land, property, homes, businesses now in Jesus name resources for nations and kingdoms in your mighty name Jesus we love you so much amen and so bless you guys thank you for that let's give Jesus a great mighty shout thank you Lord maybe we could move this uh pulpit tonight thank you lord yeah i got a a cap too somewhere that's all right all right thank you jesus thank you lord maybe brother you could sing something just for a moment let's uh, engage the spirit of worship like i said jordan and i we want to pray over you tonight and uh we're believing for this word to manifest in your lives. And we've got a few things in our hearts that we're going to call out. But let's just welcome the king to manifest Let himself. glory and honors fall on our face. And holy. Father, rest in this place. Yes, come on. Oh, let 
your glory and honor and fall on our face holy and father rest in this that your glory yeah, lift your hands tonight. Here it comes. Thank you, Father, for that wave of your glory tonight. Fall on our face tonight. May your face shine upon us, Lord. We want to be like Moses. We want to be like Jesus on the mountain, Lord, where we become changed tonight. Thank you, Father. Rest in this place. Shut up. Let the fire fall, let the wind yes. blow, let your glory come down. Come on. Let the fire fall, let the wind blow. Come on, come on, come on. Let your glory come down. Come on, come on. Yes, cry out for it tonight. Let the fire fall, let the Shh. wind blow. Let your glory come down. Let your fire fall, let your wind blow, let your glory come down. Oh, let the fire fall, let the wind blow, let your glory come down. Let your fire fall, let your wind blow, let your glory come down. Tonight, let your fire fall, let your wind blow, let your glory come down. Let your fire fall, let your wind blow, let your glory come down. <laughs> let the Woo! fire fall, let the wind blow, let your glory come down. Let your fire fall, let the wind blow, let your glory come down. Let your glory be released right now. Let your fire fall. That life changing glory in the house of God tonight. That glory that delivers. That glory that heals. That glory that restores marriages. That glory ha, that restores businesses back to life right now. Father, I thank you for a transformative power being released in the house. Let that fire fall. Oh God, just like Zechariah, let it be a fire within a glory that surrounds about us tonight, Lord. Begin to cry out to the Lord. Let the Lord hear your voice tonight. Let the Lord hear you. I, I, I thank you for volume tonight rising up in the house. Let that roar be released. Let Madeira hear you tonight. Shout unto the God. Shout unto the Lord. Yeah. Because he inhabits our praises. Father, tonight I thank you for visitation, inhabitation, for touching, curing, freeing right now by the power of God. Holy Father, rest in this place. Rest in this place. Rest on us now. Let the fire fall, let the wind blow, let your glory come down. Let the fire fall, let the wind blow, let your glory come down. Let the fire fall, let the wind blow, let your glory come down. Let the fire fall, let the wind blow. Let your glory come down. Let your glory. Yeah, right there. Here it comes. More, Lord. More, Lord. Fall on our face. Holy Father. 
Rest in this place, glory. Jesus, right now, honor. the mighty glory. Fall on our face, holy Father. Rest in this place. Oh, yeah. Rest in this place. Shut up, Baba Yes, Lord. Let the fire fall, let the wind blow. Let your glory come down. Let the fire fall, let the wind blow, let your glory come down. Let the fire fall, right let now, the wind blow, I wanna, let your glory come down. I want to invite anyone in here tonight let the fire fall, let the wind blow. who has felt like you've been attacked mentally. And this could, be, this could manifest like fear, this could manifest like severe depression. But you, you know that there's something hindering your freedom is there's something hindering you from moving forward in your life calling destiny or maybe you don't even know where, where to put your finger on it you don't even know what it is but you just know that something's not right but there's there's something of a mental attack and I, I feel like God is freeing people tonight of this that there's there's going to be a release of that oil of gladness for the spirit of mourning for the spirit of heaviness and I just want you to come front Come up front right now. Don't hesitate to come forward. If you need prayer for this, we're going to call out a few things. But my wife and I are going to pray for you tonight. Those of you who have mental, uh, have been having mental attacks, we're going to pray for you right now. Because the Lord is removing the yoke. He's destroying the heavy burden tonight. He's destroying the heavy burden. And, and uh, are you guys our catchers tonight? Great. Thank you so much. And uh, I want my wife to join me tonight. We're just going to lay hands. We're going to start over here. Father, right now, I thank you, Lord, that your anointing sets her free in the name of Jesus. There it is. There it is. Right there. Father, set her free. Loose. In her right mind, Lord, we take authority over the mind. We take authority over every spirit hindering the mind. I thank you that her mind will no longer be foggy. I thank you that there will no longer be any fatigue. I speak against that fatigue right now. Loose her right now. Loose her. Let her go. There it is. Loose by the power of the Holy Ghost. Freedom. Freedom. You reign in this place. Freedom, 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 you reign in this place, freedom, freedom, you can go ahead and pray through too. Freedom, freedom, you reign in this place. Freedom. Shot Tala Broshte, Everything changes. Everything changes. Everything changes. When you call my name. Ha. Everything changes. Thank you, Father Everything changes. Fire, fire, fire. 
Jesus name. Jesus name. When Jesus name. you call my name. Jesus. Everything changes when you call my name. Binding up the broken heart, God. Binding up that broken heart. Everything changes when you call my name. Everything changes when you call my I, I hear for you that dreams are being resurrected over you, that, that God is pulling the promises and the dreams that you thought were forgotten, that you thought were uh, 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 forfeited, and that he's going to begin to show you that they aren't, that the dreams are still alive. And I see over you Psalms 126, uh, that, that um, when the Lord brought back the captives from Zion, they were like those who dream. And the Lord saying that uh, you will say unto the Lord that you have done great things. You will begin to proclaim, Lord, you've done great things. And he'll begin to give you uh, 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 dreams uh, that are, will resurface in your life. They'll come back to the surface. You thought they were dead. You thought they were aborted. But the Lord's saying they, they, they weren't aborted. They're yet to be birthed. I thank you, Father, right now that no devil will be able to abort the promise, the destiny that's on her life. Father, I thank you now that you're losing her. Into her destiny of freedom. Touch! <sighs> Blow mighty breath of God on this woman's life. Let the power of the Lord set her free. In Jesus' name. Jesus name there it is release that joy release that river of joy that mighty river of love that love that secures that love that frees that love that dispels all fear ha Shapote le broshte kete meni niki te le broshte patum botele manon de brash to kata la mama de tishtidia in Jesus name into his spirit there it is, Father, right now. All the way into his spirit, man. Freedom right now. Shut down my core. I'm in love, I'm in love, I'm in love. With you, Jesus. Oh. I'm in love, love with you. Increase your presence. Increase your anointing right now. Let there be a freedom from my brother. Right Let there be a mighty loosing right now. Right now, Father, I loose oil and joy. Lord, I, I want to You're everything. I'm in love with you. There it is. Just receive it. It's okay. It's okay. Just receive it. That fresh baptism of your love, of your power. You're all I want. In Jesus' name. Fresh power. Lord, that fresh touch. You're everything. That I need. Freedom. Freedom in your I'm in love Freedom with you. In your name, Jesus. You're all I see. You're all I want. You're all I need. You. I'm in love with you. Give us your love. You're all I see. You're all I want. You're all I need. You're all I love. You're everything that I need. With 
You're all I see. You're all I want. You're all I need. You're all I love. You're everything to me. You're all I love. You're all I see. You all I want, you all I need, you all I love, you everything that I need. I'm in love with you. You all I need. You're all I want. Holy Spirit. You're all I need. Need you, Father, right now, in Jesus' name. You're everything. Right now, in Jesus' name, Father. That I love. We bless. bless. I'm in love with you. We bless right now. You're all I see. That mighty touch of love. All I want. Whoa, thank you, Father. Everything thank you for encounters right now. Thank you. Woo! Shupala Mantelele Atta. Touch. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Here comes the freedom. Freedom, 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 freedom. Freedom, freedom, freedom. Right now, freedom of the Holy Ghost. Freedom of the Holy Ghost. Satala Mokura Tala Masalele Andalele Boshapote. Freedom of the Everything that I love, you all I need. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm in love with you. You all I see. You all I want. Father, yes. You all finish it. I need. Finish it, Lord. Oh, God. You're all I love. You're everything. Lord, bless. Everything. Bless and touch. I'm in love with you. Fill me up, God. Here it comes. Fill us up tonight, Lord. Fill me up, God. Fill me up. Fill me up, God. Fill up everything until everything that's not of you comes out. Till everything that's not of you lets go. Here it comes. Fill me up. Love of God. Overflow. Permeate all my soul, love of God, overflow, permeate all my soul, yeah. love of God. And I lose healing into your body right now. Healing all the way through your body. I thank you, Father, for beginning to come all the way down through her spine, all the way into her feet, Father, right now, where there's pain. I let go of, I, I say let go of her right now. Thank you, Father, for working miracles in this woman's body. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Oh my soul fill me up, God. Fill me up, God. Fill me up, God. Fill me up. Fill me up, God. Fill me up, God. Fill me up, God. Fill me up. Fill me up. Right now, I feel like there's somebody, and you've got like um like a degeneration thing in your neck, like with 
like stiff it's like it's like I feel like it's stiff neck but it's um it's a result of something degenerated and God wants to touch you tonight I just want you to come forward and step step over here if that's you there's like a a miracle for somebody with a a degenerated neck like stiff neck something going on she's up there already which who the one her okay release it hun it's your miracle right now in the name of Jesus. God, I thank you for healing this neck right now. Every bone come into alignment right now in the name of Jesus. And we release the fire. There it is. Come on, Jesus. 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 We release that anointing. Come on, Jesus. Touch. Break it off. I release restoration right now. Restoration in Jesus' name. All things new. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Ha. Bro, pa, 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 pa. There's also someone with like double ringing in the ears. Who is that? Who, who, double ringing in the ears tonight? That's you. Come. Come right here. All right, stop there. Can we have a catcher behind this man? You, how long have you had ringing in your ears? Um, since 1968 in Vietnam. 1968, so for many years. Now, can you, is, is there ringing right now? Yes. So you would know if it left? Yeah. Praise the Lord. What's your name? Royce. Royce? Can we extend our hands to Royce? I believe God's going to give him a miracle tonight. Now, stand, sir, stand behind him right there. We're going to check his ears in a minute. Just lift up your hands tonight. Healing in the name of Jesus. My God's a miracle working God. Ma'am, how's your... Ma'am. Hey, ma'am. Following you. Hi. No, hey, come, come, come. Ma'am, how's your neck? Good. Is it how? All gone. The pain's all gone. Now, tell me what was exactly wrong with your neck. I felt like there was, like, degeneration. And I think I had spurs and um, neck contractions. Neck contractions. How long, is your, how long has your neck been in pain? When did I have my shoulder surgery? 2011, so for like six years, it's been 13, oh, three or four years, three or four years, you had shoulder surgery and it messed up your neck, but now move your neck around, and how, how does that feel? It pops all the time, doesn't pop anymore. It used to pop, but now it doesn't pop. Come on, Jesus. Hey. Hey. <laughs> Woo, and now you've got the joy. Now you're happy, happy, happy. <laughs> Come on, give Jesus some glory tonight. Now, 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 okay, I'll pray for you for something else, but what's going on in your ears? Is there anything different that you can tell right now? Well, they, they sound very clear right now. It doesn't sound like they're... Hey! They sound... Can you say that again? I don't think these people heard... I said they sound very clear. It doesn't sound like there's any ringing at all. Jesus. Now, you said it's been ringing since 1968. Yeah. Nin I, I, I'm not, honey, you're good at math. But decades. Come on, Jesus. Now, what, what else do you need prayer for? Well, let's thank God for that. That's amazing. The Lord, the Lord uh, 
gave me a ministry of, of laying on in hands and stuff years ago. And it's just seemed like I've hit a blockade. So I want to go through that. Jesus. Amen. Jesus. Can we get someone behind him again? My Lord. He wants his ministry to go to the next level. Amen. How? Woo! Let it be a sign. Let this be a sign. Lift up your hands. Let it be a sign. You feel that? Let it be, let it be a sign for Royce. The opening of his ears, Lord, that many will hear the word of the Lord in this man's life and ministry. Many, many unbelievers' ears will be open, eyes will be open, and I even declare that there would be a removing of the veil through your ministry, through your uh, anoint, the anointing that God releases through you, that there would be an opening of the spiritually blind, the spiritually deaf, and an opening of the physically blind, the physically deaf. I thank you, Father, that what happens in the spirit must happen in the natural. Lord, and I speak over Royce's life and his ministry that there would be right now, right now, that oil that we've been speaking about, that oil for destiny, that oil, that anointing, ha, to preach good news and to do the work of the gospel. And I, I see you, you kind of like, um, when I look at you, Royce, <laughs> phew, I'm getting like a, like a contact buzz off of this guy. I'm going to say this from back here. I'm so sorry. Um, you remind me of like a, a Smith Wigglesworth. And I, I feel the word for you is like great faith. Like God, God is um, not going to give you just a gift of faith. And he's not going to give you just a measure of faith. But I hear great faith for you, um, just like the centurion man in the Bible. And the Lord would say to you, I believe, that you're going to begin to see miracles um, atmospherically and things that, where you don't even have to lay hands on them. You've said, well, well I, I lay hands on the sick and see them recover. But I see you working with uh, Psalms 127 which is uh, God sent his word and healed them and delivered them of their destruction. I see you like a Cornelius, or like, a, like the centurion man, I should say, partnering with heaven, partnering with the angels, sending forth the healing word. And I see you speaking forth over some of your family members that are far away. I see you beginning to call some family members that are out of state. I, I even see a member of yours. You have someone, um, I feel like it's a female member that's like in the hospital right now. Is that right? Is there anyone in the hospital that like, okay. Well, I, I feel what I feel is that you're going to begin to speak the healing word to your family, that you're going to begin to be a sign and a wonder into your family's life. And the first harvest, the first fruits of your harvest that you're going to begin to see will be in your own family. I speak that over you, Royce, that you're going to begin to see a harvest of prodigals come home, a harvest of, you know, lost sons and daughters that begin to come home. And I, I speak that over you right now, that you'll begin to see a mighty harvest, mighty fruit in the family. Family first, I hear the Lord saying, Whew, release that blessing over him right now. Shagabah. You want to call out the, some words? I, I just have one. Is there someone who, who needs God to touch their womb or has like ovarian cysts? And is there somebody in here? Anybody? Does anyone know anybody? Someone close to them? I actually felt that too. You know, we've been sharing a testimony. Mm. Okay. Okay. Okay, yeah. Why don't you pray over Helen? There's no distance in the spirit. You know, we were just talking about sending forth the healing word, and we've been seeing this a lot in our ministry, people getting healed over the phones and all kinds of crazy stuff. And um, I believe that we can speak to Helen in the spirit and release healing to her right now. And so, honey, why don't you pray? Yeah, let's pray, guys. God, I thank you for Helen. God, we just release the anointing over Helen in the name of Jesus over her ovaries, God, over her womb. Lord, I thank you, God, for healing her and touching her right now. God, any, any bleeding that's going on, we command it to stop. We command any attack of the enemy to cease in the name of Jesus, God, and we proclaim her healing. We proclaim her liberty right now, God. I thank you, God, that she's going to go to the doctor and have, an, have a great report from heaven. She's going to have a good report. She's going to come back healed, Lord, in the name of Jesus. I thank you, God. Right now, we release the fire over her, the fire over her life and her family. In the name of Jesus, God, we thank you for that miracle right now. In Jesus' name. Come on, Jesus. Yeah. You want prayer? 
What do you? What would you like prayer for? Level up. Amen. Amen. I'll pray for you right now. We're going to invite everyone to come up in a moment who wants to level up and step into the next place of their destiny. Whew. Here it is. It's just the anointing doing it, you know? It's not always about what the man or woman or God says. It's the anointing. It's the, it's the holy presence of God. And I pray right now, Lord, that you would remove what needs to be removed, the barriers, the hindrances. We say those things have to be tossed. The, those mountains... We speak to be tossed into the sea right now. We cast them away, Lord, and I thank you, Father. Shoot, there it is. Release that. Father, finish it right now. There it is. Loose. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Just a little bit of freedom tonight. Give Jesus some glory for that. Woo! Let's, let's do this. Let's pray. I want anyone, you know, who's hungry and, and wants to respond to this word tonight to come forward and receive prayer. But, you know, real quick, real, wait, 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 just wait real quick. I know, I know this might be, you know, this may not apply tonight. We're in a room full of believers, but I just always want to be sure. Um, the greatest miracle of all is salvation. And I just want to make sure tonight that we, we know that everyone walks out knowing the Lord. And tonight, I'm just going to give a quick invitation. If you're here, maybe you're dragged here by your parents or whatever, or you're brought here and you're not following the Lord. You don't, you, you've heard us talk about Jesus tonight, but you don't have a relationship with him. I just want to give a quick invitation for you to come forward and receive Christ tonight, to receive Jesus. And maybe you can look to the person next to you and just, Make sure, just tap them on the shoulder and say, you know, check to see where they're at. And if you're here tonight and you're not sure, then that's a sign that you need to make sure. That you need to make sure you know the Lord. And I'm telling you right now, it's the best thing that you could ever do. It's the best decision you could ever make to live for Jesus. Huh. And so, I know we're in a room full of believers, but I always make opportunity for people to come to know the Lord. And so, all right, so let's, let's do this then. Let's invite everybody up to the front. My wife and I are going to pray for you, and then we're going to be available in the back afterwards to talk to you guys and fellowship and things like that. But let's just form a nice, neat line. We'll start with this woman shoulder to shoulder.